Hello everybody, June here. Welcome back to finally an actual sewing video or at least a video of something I have sewn. As many of you know, without me having to tell you, there's this thing called a pandemic and I have essentially not sewn anything or I had not sewn anything since the beginning of March when we went into lockdown. I thought at the beginning of the lockdown, oh my goodness, if this lasts any length of time, I'm going to have the best wardrobe in New York City by the time it's done because I've been hoarding fabric, I mean collecting fabric and patterns for years, so I was ready. But no, uh, because along with uh, the world going on lockdown, my sojo and my desire to do anything except just survive just went away. And so I didn't sew anything between March and a couple of weeks ago. Actually, that's not true. I saw two Victorian undergarments, but that's a story for another day. In this video, first of all, I want to start by saying that Mood Fabrics uh, gave me store credit to purchase the fabric, this fabric. Uh, and so uh, this is in part done for the Mood Sewing Network, but all opinions are my own. They did not pay me cash for any of this. They have not instructed me on what to say. The only condition was that I make some videos and posts about the fabric. So now that that's out of the way, let's talk about this dress. This dress is the Dear and Dome Mayo Sodas dress and it has been on my to make list forever. And for one reason or another, I never got around to making it. Um, and then a couple of months ago, I, th I think it was just about a month and a half ago, Mood was asking uh, for a new batch of Mood Sewing Network uh, bloggers and I thought, okay, this is the kick in the pants that I need. So I went ahead and I applied. I didn't think that I would actually get picked, but I did get picked. And so here we are. And that is where uh, the Myosotis comes into play. I ordered this fabric. It is a gorgeous uh, cotton ball in a color. It's actually kind of mustard, but on the website it looks a little yellow. But they call it Mediterranean Dreams, I think is what they call this um, colorway. Uh, so when it arrived, I had to rethink my plans because I had planned to make something else. But the moment that I saw the fabric, I knew that it would be perfect for the Mayosota dress. So I got to work. I had seen quite a lot of pictures of this dress on Instagram and it looked so great on everybody. It seemed to flatter every kind of body. And being an apple shape is a little difficult to find dresses that fit. Um, and I thought this one would fit me, but I noticed that a lot of the pictures on Instagram had a, a lot of the dresses on Instagram had a very fitted bodices and this is not a fitted dress. There's no zipper. Uh, these closures here are, well, you can't see them, but here uh, is all that there is. And I was wondering how do they get it on? How do they get this dress on with a bodice so fitted? And there actually aren't a lot of pictures of the dress from behind. So what I didn't realize is that everyone who had a fitted bodice essentially had put ties on the side. Now, I didn't put ties on the side. I decided to not go with a look and sort of stay true to the original design. And it is not a terribly loose bodice, but it's loose enough that I can get myself through the waist. Um, when I put it on, it goes over my bust without any issues. I made a size 44 with a one inch full bust adjustment, which gave me not just the width that I needed, but also obviously the length. And I also moved the bust darts here three quarters of an inch up and about an inch and a quarter out because they were too low and they were coming too far into my apex. And that was not, that was not good. So I think here I've gotten a good fit on the bodice. I'm gonna look at my screen here. And I'm, I'm very happy with the adjustments that I made to this bodice and I think it looks good. When you do a full bust adjustment, you end up with excess, I mean, whatever you add to the bust, to the width, you add to the whole entirety of the bodice. So this one has darts and I wish that I had set my camera lower. This one has darts here and you have the option because you do the, the adjustment through the dart, you have the option of making the dart bigger so that you end up with the same waist width as before the adjustment. But again, because I am so apple shaped, I needed the extra width at the waist. So I decided to just go ahead and do the same um, with dart 
at the waist. So then I actually ended up with a bigger waist um, seam, so wider waist than the original pattern. And I did make a muslin. I made a wearable, well, I made a muslin muslin, then I made a wearable muslin. And in the end, I actually decided to take an even smaller dart than the original. So after all was said and done, my waist width for this dress is the same as a size 46. So to accommodate for that on the bodice, I cut my skirt at a size 46. And that made it so that it's actually a good proportion and it's um, loose enough, that I, like I said, that I can get it over my head and over my bust, but not a tent, which is what I was worried about because I have also seen some that look quite tenty on people. And then I decided to go with the, uh, the shorter skirt with the flounce. And the pattern says that the flounce has to be cut on the cross grain. So instead of folding the fabric along the grain, selvage to selvage, you essentially fold the fabric uh, from cut end to cut end so that the very wide flounce can fit into your fabric if your fabric is uh, narrower than say 59 inches or so. Now, this fabric has a directional design, so if I had done that, the flowers on the flounce would be sideways. And that is not a pretty look. So, I, my, this fabric is 55 inches wide. All that I did was just cut the flounce, the complete length of, oh, the complete width of my fabric, and I only lost one inch per flounce. And there's two flounces, one for the front, one for the back. In the greater scheme of things, considering how much gathering there is in this flounce, that did not make a bit of difference. So if your fabric isn't quite 59 inches and you have a directional design, you can make it work. So those are really the only two major-ish uh, changes that I made to the dress. Obviously, once I had made the full bust adjustment and made the, the front bodice slightly longer, I also had to lengthen the facing, which is just the center front facing. There's no facing for the collar. And one other thing, uh, which is very minor, hard to see here because it's you know so flowery but the buttonhole and buttonhole line as marked on the pattern does not work i will post a little clip here for my wearable muslin which i put the buttons and the buttonholes in the place that the pattern says and what happens is that they end up way too close to the edge because when you put the bodice together you overlap the left and the side and the right side about three quarters of an inch so regardless of where you put your buttons on, on that overlap, the, the actual width of the bodice doesn't change. So for this one, what I did was I moved the button and buttonhole line in towards the side so that it is actually in the middle of the button band. So in the middle of the three quarter inch that you can actually see on this line here. I don't know if you can see it here, probably don't. And that doesn't actually change the fit, like I said, but it makes for a more aesthetically pleasing look. My buttons are not all the way on the edge. They're not um, just doing weird things uh, right, right on the edge of the button band. Construction-wise, I didn't deviate at all. Uh, my fabric is very sheer and, well, it's not very sheer, it's very thin. Uh, and so I decided to do French seams for the most part. The only seams that don't have French seams are the arm side and the, the seams with a gathering here at the waist. And I don't think this is gonna come up. Oh, maybe it will. And down here at the flounce. Everything else has French seams. Nice and close, it's not going to ravel. And speaking of light fabric and sheer fabric, I was worried that this would be very sheer because like I said, it is a cotton wall. It's very thin, but you can't actually see through it. You can't see through the, the bodice. You, you may, I don't think you can see my bra and I've worn this outside. And you can't really see through the skirt either. So in the end, it all worked out. But I will say 
that I never wear dresses without shorts or half slip of some sort underneath. So I wasn't terribly worried about the, the sheer nature of the fabric for the skirt. Anything lighter or maybe if it was a lighter color, it might have been a problem, but not for this one. And going back to the fabric, the product number is MD0329. It is, like I said, a cotton voile. It is a lovely mustardy color. I hope it comes through well here. Sometimes it looks very yellow on screen, but it's actually kind of mustard. And these flowers are to die for. The blue flowers are true navy and the fabric feels great. It's, it feels almost like a silk, but it's not silk. It's just, it's just gorgeous. And it was a delight to sew with. Nothing but good things to say about this fabric. And if you want to buy this fabric or any other fabric I move, there are some conditions that I will put in the description box. You can use discount code MSNTSH2, so the number two, for a 10% discount on your order. And yeah, so this is what I have for now, I have I made two of these dresses, so my wearable muslin and then my muslin in the last four days. And if I never have to gather anything else in my life again, it'll be too soon. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.